Hello, this is Nathan Wood, pastor of North Dayton Baptist Church, and welcome to day 98 of the McShane Reading Plan. Today, as we open the Word of God together, we're in Leviticus 11 and 12, Psalms 13 and 14, Proverbs 26, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In Leviticus 12, we have the prescribed offering options for women who have just given birth and Mary, when Jesus is born, chooses the poorest. It's a beautiful thing. It's a short little chapter, but it, it goes with the life of our Lord and Savior. Um, Psalm 14, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Friends, we shouldn't want to overtly or or out of vainglory be offensive. Uh, there's plenty of that going around in the political and social atmosphere. But the truth is going to hurt. And sometimes the truth has to hurt in order to uh, prick the hearts of people into repentance and so uh, coming to salvation. That's the purpose of the last uh, seven years of this um, grand drama, if you will, before the millennial reign of our Lord. God deals with Israel, and God deals with the remaining Gentiles on the earth, pricking them to come back to him. That's the purpose of that seven years of wrath. Our reading in First Thessalonians tells us that the church not, is not appointed to wrath. We're called to see the times. It's not about date setting or or writing books about predicting this time or that time. It's about knowing the times. Like when a woman is having contractions, you know that the baby's coming. Or even if she has a false contraction, I can't remember the technical term for that. That, mean, that doesn't mean the baby's not coming. It means that it's still coming, but we're reminded. We're reminded. Friends, it's not distasteful to talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ or the rapture. You may disagree with it. I, I don't disagree with it. I think it's biblical. Um, I think it's pl the plain sense of Scripture. I think it's the plain reading of Scripture. And friends, by not avoiding it, the topic, we can get down on the world level and say, hey, listen, this isn't going to last. The clock is ticking. Eventually, the time will run out. And a time that you don't know, that buzzer is going to sound, and the game will be over. In the same way with us Christians, we need to be sober and looking up, understanding, understanding that in a time when we think not, the Lord's going to come. And we need to be about his business because there's going to come a time when we're going to be caught up in the air. And that's going to be a glorious release and mercy for us uh, that believe in Jesus Christ, this side of his coming. But you realize that's also going to be time's up for you. Your evangelism work, or evangelism work is over. The only thing that you're leaving on that earth is your testimony. Better leave a good one. Better leave a good one. Um, how are you leaving the word of God alive in the hearts of those that are around you? Are you writing things? Are you recording things? Are you talking with people and leaving a lasting impression? Are you praying? Are you studying? How are you leaving a legacy and testimony? Are you storing up treasures in heaven? Are you leaving a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and not your own legacy on earth? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that the world's going to end tomorrow or that the church is going to be called up tonight. But I will tell you this. The earth groans. Sin is rampant. In our, our, in our hearts, the church's heart, the world's heart, that sin is rampant. Um, there's discord and 
temptation and just tumultuous activity within and without. The Lord, I, I think it pains the Lord to let it go on. Of course, he ha might have it go on longer than I expect. And it could get darker. It could get brighter before it gets darker. But I believe the scripture says it will eventually get darker before it gets lighter for the final time and forever. So friends, don't be afraid to be looking for the Lord to catch you up in the rapture. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're not going to be going. Make sure you know him. Make sure you know the Lord Jesus. Make sure you trust in him. Make sure you trust in his deity, in his perfect humanity. Make sure that you believe that he died and rose again and trust in that. Trust in that as your replacement, as your propitiation, as your atonement, the payment of your, and in place of your payment for your sin, Jesus took your place and rose victorious so you can rise again and live with him forever. It's my prayer that your trust is in him and not in your own notions or your own works. Please trust in Jesus today. He loves you, and we love you. Have a good day.